Thanks for staying with us. Uh, the Lagos State Government plans to ban the circulation of single-use plastics, SUPs, including sachet water, starting in January 2025. This was confirmed by the Commissioner for Environment and Water Resources, Tokumba Wahab, at a stakeholders' workshop as part of efforts to implement sustainable plastic waste management and promote a healthy environment. Stakeholders, however, urged the government to face in the ban gradually, uh, considering the current economic difficulties. Mosaku Ololade, Ololade uh, Lagos Chairperson of the Association for Table Water Producers of Nigeria, uh, emphasized the need for phased implementation to allow over 2,000 2, members and 10,000 workers to comply effectively. So with me this morning is Mr. Nick Agule, a public affairs analyst. Good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning, Yangu, and good morning to our viewers globally. Okay, it started with uh, the, the plates. It, this is now entering the water, and uh, it, that is because they want to control the way plastic is used in Nigeria. The Lagos State Government wants to ban sachet water. In one of the reports that I read, they even said some the pet bottles are part of this um, uh, of this move, so that they are going to ban the pet bottles usage. They are going to ban the sachet water or the, the sachets uh, in circulation and all that. So I don't know what your take is right now. Uh, let, let me hear your, your views. Uh, thank you very much uh, for that question. So the move by the Lagos State government overall is a good move because just like governments elsewhere, people are becoming more cautious of the environment and it is good that that happens because the environment is our neighbor we live with the environment and when we mishandle the environment the environment gets angry and gets back at us and we have seen that uh, happen uh, in many places even here in nigeria so if a government takes the step to ensure that we're caring for the environment and we are not provoking the environment to react violently against us it is the duty of government to safeguard their lives and property and that will be okay but what i find not okay with this approach is it looks as if the Lagos state government is trying to rush through this and that is going to be a problem because let us not forget there are businesses and livelihoods that depend on the industry that uses this single-use plastic products and there has to be a transition period that will enable these businesses to seamlessly move from the current practice to the new practice without having any adverse implications on the businesses that they run. And even I was reading the story um, in the link that was sent across, and I realized that even the Lagos State government has not even put in place the legal framework for this to happen. So I wonder why they are rushing to give a date of uh, January, which is basically like three months away. Because if the legislation will need to be done right and follows through the legal drafting processes in the State House of Assembly, including public hearing and stakeholder engagement up to the time that the governor will sign that bill into law, that alone should take three months. Then not to talk about now businesses, we need to understand what the legislation expects of them. Then they have to now rejig their operational uh, capacities to be able to meet up with the law. So I would suggest that a timeline of one year, instead of talking about 2025 January, they should be looking at 2026 January to bring this uh, law into effect. And also, I, I, I can give an example like, of like the UK government. Uh, they are not yet on an outright ban, but they are in a transition. So one of the things they have done is that they decided that um, 
shops should no longer give out plastic bags free of charge you know so if you want to take a plastic bag now from a shop they charge you but then shops are also using uh reusable bags they have reusable bags they have which they even are selling but for consumers they look at it and say each if each time i go to the shop to pick a plastic bag i pay for it then it is better for me to pay money and have a reusable bag which i can now be using to go to shop and and do that mm -hmm. and those are the kind of considerations that lagos state government should have and more so this shouldn't just be about Lo uh, Lagos State government alone. It's not only in Lagos State that this pollution is happening. All other states need to also catch on on this. And possibly, there should be a, 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 an overarching law at the national that states can then domesticate so that we can save our environment and live peacefully with it. Okay, but I don't know. Sometimes when we make the laws, I don't know if we shouldn't be considering the reality on ground. Well, government, uh, the Lagos State government banned Okada, as we call them, and they got away with it. I don't know how much time they took to put the law in place, if there's a law uh, that uh, was put in place. I don't know how they fine-tuned it and what, what they considered before they uh, banned this thing. So far, it's been so many months gone, uh, nothing happened, and we're we are adjusting to it because Nigerians are very good at adjusting uh, to whatever happens to us. They banned the styrofoam too a, a few months ago uh, in 2023 or so, or early 2024, and then nothing happened. I don't know how much time they had before they did that. Nothing happened. Now they're talking about ba banning even the pet bottles, pure water, and all that. Or that's how, how we call it, the sachet water. Now, if you ban this in a Lagos with a lot of traffic, in a Lagos with a lot of population of people who some of them don't even go back to their houses for a very very long time will the consideration of these people not be put in in will these people not be put into consideration before they make a law what are the alternatives provided for these people you are in traffic now how do you get water to drink you are living almost in a in a public place because some of them actually don't have uh, houses to go back to some of them have to hustle so much so that they don't they cannot even go back to their houses because they have to sell all the time 24 7 and all that how will these people survive when this very good law comes into effect and people cannot buy pet bottles of water or sachet water anymore uh, it's going to be very difficult for the businesses and the operators and in, a, in, in the entire value chain, uh, including uh, suppliers into the factories, the water factories. And the and consumers as well, especially the consumers. That's what I'm concerned about. Yeah, those who distribute the water and then those who actually sell the water, who retain the water, and those who drink the water. Mm. The whole, that whole value chain is going to be affected. If this is not uh, taken on in a systematic way, that will be a win-win for everybody. And that's why it's very important for the Lagos State Government to actually engage with the stakeholders in these uh, businesses. Let, let them get these people around the table. Let them understand the peculiarities of their businesses so that a timeline is agreed between the government and those who will be directly affected by this new law. So that with that timeline, everybody knows what their responsibilities are and they know what needs to be done so that they can be compliant at the, at the end of the time. Because this thing is going to require money as well to be able to comply with this uh, uh, regulation. So it's going to require money and you know, the details of what needs to be complied with are not there if the law is not yet there. So it's good that the government has made an announcement to, to, um, to you know, bring the minds of the people to what is happening. But the implementation needs to be done in a very systematic way so that there are no pains, no additional injuries caused to businesses that are already struggling 
with the economy as it stands now. So if they were to provide alternatives, what are they going to do? Because like I raised the concern, people need to drink water. Uh, so what are they going to do? We don't even have pipe-borne water in this country. It's no, there's nothing like a public tap that you can go get this water. There is no provision for that. And so people drink this uh, sachet water. People drink uh, from the pet bottles and all that. If it is banned, uh, what now happens? You go to a restaurant and you're given water in cup. How will they regulate how good that water is? Because sometimes we know that at least these pet bottles, uh, bottle, bottle water and the sachet water, at least it comes through a process, even though it is not very, uh, it's, it's not 100%, especially for the sachet water, at least it comes through a process and makes it a bit safer. Now you go to a place and you want to eat, you get water to drink. There is no guarantee that the water they're going to serve you in a glass is uh, clean enough, is good enough, healthy enough in Nigeria that we know. And what are the alternatives that they need to provide to make sure that people don't die as a result of government trying to make the place clean? Well, there are alternatives. Uh, there are packages that are recyclable so long as the material is recyclable that can be used to package so if you go to elsewhere now you will see that uh, things like milk that used to be packaged in plastic bottles and all of that is now repackaged in recyclable materials so long as the material can be recycled it's fine the problem is uh, plastic materials that cannot be recycled that can um uh, then damage the environment. So that is one side, that there are recyclable materials that can be used. But on the other hand, even with the plastic bottles, we can now, and that's also a duty of the government, to provide the uh, waste uh, bins around the cities. If you go to other cities around the world, at every point there are waste bins installed by the government where people are expected to trash whatever that they have, that they want to trash. And then laws are made about littering, you know. So if you don't put your your your, your trash into the waste bin, they drop it on the ground. You are littered. And there is a law that can uh, get you on that. And you know, there are cities around the world, wherever you go, they are heavily policed with uh, CCTV cameras and all of that. So there is work here to be done by the government as well. And the government, in its enforcement, should provide the enabling environment for citizens to comply with this kind of laws. You know, if they provide the waste basket and make it easy for people to then dispose of their their waste, and also go on a public education to try and encourage people to do this, and then put an enforcement in place so that those who don't comply are duly picked up and then the, the consequence management is visited on them so it, it's not just about businesses alone that should be made to be at the brunt the government also has its own role to play and civil society has its own role to play and the citizens have their own role to play and this is why a public consultation needs to happen by the Lagos state government you know, because um, the, the, in the link that I read, I, I could see that the Association of Water Producers in Lagos, they seem to be left out of this decision making. And they are pleading for the government to consider them that they have 2,000 members, that is 2,000 different water producers on their register that are employing up to 10,000 people. You know, so that's a lot of uh, uh, employment. Uh, that will be impaired if this is not handled well. And then imagine that uh, we don't have people producing water again. How is that going to happen? And of course, then on the other side of it, on the other side of the coin, if you go to most public buildings elsewhere, you will have uh, water fountains that have been installed there, you know, for staff and visitors and those who are coming to the place. They are able to drink water uh, from the fountains with disposable uh, and recyclable cups you know so that uh, if a lot of people are drinking water in their offices and all of that with recyclable cups then of course uh, that would take the pressure of those who are buying such water and all of that mm -hmm. but again uh, citizens can also help the situation uh, by buying water jugs 
you know, water jugs that are recyclable, reusable, reusable. You buy your water jug reusable. When you are leaving your home in the morning, you you rinse it properly, yeah, and then you put water inside. And you, you have your water jug with you so that if you are water testing, from you where? Know, That's the question. Water water from where? We don't even have portable water, Mr. Uh, I I wish we had more time, but. People in Nigeria don't even have portable water. It's the water they buy from outside that they can trust. No household in Nigeria, at least 80% uh, of the households in Nigeria do not have water that they can drink from the tap. So they cannot collect in these water jugs to come. They will need water that is clean enough. And if this is stopped, we don't know how we are going to be getting this, except we are going to go back to the time where we were using tanker to uh, provide water for the people. And how do you trust this water? But we have to drop it here for today. I think this is a, an ongoing conversation. This uh, discussion was not held with stakeholders. Now the stakeholders are just begging them for more time. And I wish our government gets to the point where before you make a decision, you will ask the people that it's going to impact first before you do that. But we cannot continue, unfortunately, this morning. I would like well, to thank you, you, if you give me, If you give me 30 seconds, if you give me 30 seconds, okay, I will try. respond to say that. Try, yes. In, in, in the yes, in the short term, in the short term, people, you know, there are these bigger water containers. People can buy those ones and then be using that to retain into their water bottles. But then you have raised a very big point, which governments need to understand. Nigeria is replete with water bodies, fresh water bodies all over the place. And it is unfortunate that up to now, governments have not been tapping from this water, purifying it and supplying it to citizens. And this is the role of national government, state government and local government. Mm. They should get into this. How can people not have water? When water is flowing all over the people, okay. you know, so that is another thing that also needs to happen. So a lot needs to happen. Even the Lagos state government they should make sure that it's pipe water in every home. Yeah. You know, so that people, they, they, they need to buy this uh, uh, sachet water or we'll water in uh, pet bottles, we can reduce. Okay. Thank you very much, Nika Gule, for coming on the show and sharing your thoughts with us. I thank you very much and uh, a nice day to all of us. Yeah. Same to you. Okay, we've been talking with Mr. Nika Gule, public affairs analyst. We were looking at the decision of Lagos State Government to ban sachet water, uh, plastic bottled water, and all those kind of things for the safety of the, of the environment. Uh, that's a, a, an ongoing discussion. I'm sure that we'll have a part two uh, some other time. But in the meantime, this is where we draw the curtain on the show this morning. Thank you for being there for us. Uh, my name is Nyamgul Agaji.